The link implant is a small device that is planted just under the skin. This is what it looks like. And it literally will sit about there on the patient's chest. And it's basically gives 24 seven monitoring for up to three years. That's basically what it is in a nutshell. It can pick up fast heartbeat, slow heartbeat, pauses, and also the patient is an activator, so if they feel unwell or dizzy, they can push a button and the rhythm will be called at that point in time. So that's basically what a link is. The original one was called a reveal, which looks like a weapon, but you can see our technologies improve. So as your computer at home's got better, so has our technology got better. So you can see how we've uh, made it last longer and made it a lot smaller. So. That's where it was the original one called the reveal, but the link is the one that we currently use. So the link device has varied uh, uses. So there's three big categories. Um, the most common one is probably for syncope, for blackouts. So the subgroup of patient which keeps falling over, often with no warning, obviously it's very difficult to know exactly what the mechanism is. They come to your clinic, you do an ECG, you even do a 24 hour tape, it doesn't show anything. But the problem is causes of blackout can be very much like a fault in an engine. It can occur intermittently, three months or even years apart in some patients. So having something that's there permanently for three years um, allows you to make the diagnosis. The second big group is patients often come with palpitations. The heart races or goes fast. And it's a very simple way to make a diagnosis. You put the device in and they have the episode, they push the button, you can capture the diagnosis. The third evolving subgroup is actually stroke. Because we know that atrial fibrillation causes a lot of stroke. So we get a lot of younger patients and even intermediate age who've had a stroke, but they go to our stroke physicians. They do the ultrasound of the neck, we do echoes, et cetera, do tapes. They can't find a cause. And a percentage of those will probably have undiagnosed AF. So the link is also put in to diagnose atrial fibrillation. And if AF is diagnosed, the way the patient is treated is completely different. So you'll, you'll go from something like clopidogrel or aspirin, you'll be switched to a drug, a NOAC, such as a pixaban, a doxaban, or roxaban. So those are the three main uh, groups. So syncope, palpitations, and the third group is stroke patients. Link and a test meter Medtronic, which is the company that developed the device, is uh, you can nearly do it at one stop. So there's not much preparation for the patient. And the main thing is consent, understanding what the device is. And indeed, we, in the moment in our syncope service, uh, in some of the hospitals I work at, we do a one stop shop. So if I see a patient with syncope and I go through the history and I'm really concerned that indeed this could be cardiac syncope, we literally can Im implant it in the room. It has to be a clean room, um, but literally it's that quick. It's like, takes five minutes to implant, just need a bit of asepsis. Um, so from a patient's preparation, there's not much really. It's, it's, a, it's a very straightforward implant. A minimally invasive procedure that can be done in a clean room, um, which makes it easier for access. Um, the, the way we do it, the patient's prepared, they don't need uh, venflons in, which is a big advantage. Uh, we did a recent study showing that there's no benefit of prophylactic antibiotics. So the good news is there's no cannulation of the patient, which is another risk in, to the individual. The patient comes in, lies on the table, lies flat, give some local anesthetic. So, so we clean the skin first, apply some local anesthetic along the tract that we're gonna inject, wait five minutes for the local to work. That's the probably the longest part of the procedure. Specially designed tool where we make a small nick in the skin. And then with a special introduction tool, we then introduce the device, inject it, single closure, dressing, that's, your, that's how it's done. A bit of recovery time, you know, some patients uh, may get a vagal response to having any form of surgery, uh, but most patients within half an hour are walking out after a cup of tea. 
the current link, which I've showed you, lasts three years, but the new one that will probably be released sometime this year has really been released, but it's a limited release, but it'll be probably in the main market by, you know, mid this year, later this year, will last five years, same size. So three to five years would be the answer by the time the patient actually gets the device, depending what particular model they have implanted. common um, problem that we obviously uh, tell patients about with any operation is infection uh, or bleeding. And infection probably is the one uh, bugbear that can happen in a small percentage of people. But the good news is if it, say the device did get infected, which would be less than 0.5%, uh, all you do is bring them back to the surgery, a little bit of locally, just pull the device up and give some antibiotics. Um, some patients, we implant the link device on blood thinners, particularly the stroke subgroup. Um, and this particular patient may get a small bit of hematoma or bleeding, but generally it's not a big issue. Um, some patients do find the link uncomfortable very rarely. And I'd say in my career of 10 years of implanting them, maybe one or two patients, I've had to remove the device because they just don't like it. It's normally patients with a very thin habitus where they, they just, you know, they just can't tolerate the, having the device under their skin. But again, that's extremely rare. So very well tolerated procedure and device. So after the device is implanted, it's still an operation. So I would suggest they have that day off. I wouldn't expect them to go straight back to the workplace, even though some patients do, it's not recommended. Um, keeping the wound clean is, is really important. Um, so you can shower. So I normally say keep the, the wound dry for at least three or four days. So, you know, by all means have a shower, but just keep a dressing on while you have your shower. Uh, I wouldn't suggest bathing in a bath for probably a week, just because it's less clean than having a shower. Sports wise, if you're going bench pressing or doing heavy weights, I'd give it a good couple of weeks because obviously you're going to put traction on the device. But most activities, sports, within a few days, you can get back to it. If you're cycling or walking, you literally can do that the next day. So it really has very minimal impact on the, on the patient's life and what they can do.